All right, fourth graders, it is that time for <gasps> Midnight How. And it is written by Claire Hutton and published by Scholastic. Let's get into chapter two. There we go. Chapter two. The first thing I noticed about Montana was how cold it was. My mom and I stepped out of the tiny glacial Nas National Park International Airport. Wow, try saying that three times fast. Glacier National Park International Airport. National, oh, I can't even, nope. So we're gonna try that sentence again. My mom and I stepped out of the tiny glacial National Park International Airport and suddenly the cute purple tank top and jeans, which had been perfect for a mid-September day in Austin, were definitely not enough. I was exhausted. Turns out Glacier National Park Airport is impossible to fly directly from Texas. So we'd spent a long, long time getting there. Mm. I, outside, there was a bright, clear blue sky and I could see white clapped mountains not far in the distance. Wow, I said, admiring the view. Mom, check it out. But my mom wasn't looking at the scenery. She had a big smile on her face and was waving wildly at a blonde woman with long frizzy hair and freckles. The woman was getting out of a red pickup truck near us and waving back with even more <gasps> enthusiasm. Uh oh, I dropped the book. I guess I had too much enthusiasm. Okay. Molly, my mom practically screamed. Molly, mom, I whispered, embarrassed. She's like three feet away. You don't have to yell. Anna, the woman, now only a foot away, shrieked back. She and my mom grabbed each other in a great big bear hug. When they let go, Molly grabbed me and squeezed tight. She smelled like soap and just a little bit like a horse. Marisol, she exclaimed. I can't believe this is the first time I'm meeting you. You're so grown up. She let go and turned to my mom. Anna, she looks just like you did when we met. They were off on a big round of, remember that time when I noticed about a girl my age getting out of the truck? Hmm. Her mom had leaped out and run over to us looking delighted, but this girl was taking her time and wasn't smiling. She had long frizzy blonde hair too and freckles and her pale blue eyes looked at me wearily. Mm -hmm. Hi, I said, stepping towards her. I'm Marisol. Are you Molly's daughter? Haley, she mumbled and haunched her shoulders, staring down at her shoes. Okay, did she hate me already or was she just shy? I tried again and I gave her a great big smile. I can't believe my mom didn't tell me that you were my age, I said. All she said was Molly and her family. You'd think she might have said, by the way, her daughter is the same age as you, right? Haley gave me a very small smile and then looked away. Mom flushed. I'm sorry, Molly. I hate to admit it, but I lost track of how old your twins are. I thought they were younger than Marisol, but they seem to be just about the same age. Molly nodded. Haley and Jack are 12. She didn't seem offended that my mom hadn't known. Wait a second, twins? Jack? Hmm. My mother had also forgotten to tell me that I was going to spend the next three months living with a boy. <sighs> A lot to this, a lot of girls wouldn't think it's a big deal. A lot of girls have brothers or guy friends that they know really, really well and hang out with all the time, so they're like family. But me? I'm a girl who lives with her mom and has close girl friends. I don't have any boy cousins and I don't have any real guy friends. The last genuine friendship I had with a boy ended with Toby Collington stole my a sparkly pencil in second grade and wouldn't give it back. I knew boys, of course, from school and stuff, but not super close up and definitely not living together close. 
I try to be level-headed in general, but that doesn't mean that I'm fearless about extreme social weirdness, like sharing a bathroom with a boy. I started to panic. My first thought was, I needed to stop wearing my PJs to breakfast, and I'll have to start brushing my hair before I leave my room in the morning. Ugh. I must have a funny expression on my face because Molly gives me a worried frown. Marisol, are you okay? Are you hungry? I smiled at her, relieved. Whew. Not an excuse to stop thinking about boys. Actually, I'm starving. Well, we better get going then, she said cheerily and led the way. I made an awkward, awkward. I made an awkward entrance into the back seat of the big pickup cab. It was hard to step up high enough and I sort of scrambled my way into the seat. Whoops, I said, laughing. I don't have enough to practice getting into pickups. We have a hybrid back in Texas. Haley shrugs and looks away, out the window. Well, not really friendly. Molly turned around from the front seat. We've got about an hour and a half drive to our place. If you're starving, we should hit a drive through before we leave town. I looked out my window. There was a gorgeous view, but not much else. Just a few houses and a little strip mall with some stores and a McDonald's. Where's town, I asked. Haley stared at me, but didn't say anything. Molly laughed. <laughs> That's it, she says, throwing her arms wide. It doesn't look like much, but this is where we come to do our shopping. Out here, we live in a real country. Wow, I said nervously. That's great, but uh, I can't eat at McDonald's. I'm vegetarian. What a coincidence, Molly said cheerfully. So is Haley. You can just eat whatever she eats and you'll be fine. Haley spoke for the first time since we'd gotten in the truck. It is pretty tough to find something to eat in town, she said quietly. I'm a vegan, so I don't even eat cheese. Most places, all I can get is a salad or maybe some fries. What about Chinese food, I asked, or Indian, veggie, sushi, Tex-Mex? Haley shook her head. <sighs> okay, I said weakly. If all I had for three months was salad and fries, then Tasha was right. I was definitely going to die of malnutrition. I shifted closer to Haley and whispered, We might have to starve here, but someday you'll come to Austin and we'll get real food. Austin has the best Mexican food on the planet. Well, besides outside of Mexico. She gave me a startled look and flushed, turning to look out her window again. I sighed. Apparently... <sighs> Apparently, turn the page. Apparently, aha. Uh -huh. Apparently, not eating meat hadn't been enough mm, to break the ice. Sure, I'd be fine, fine with a girl I had to live with and go to school with who could barely speak to me. Fine living with a strange boy, fine with a diet consisting entirely of fried potatoes and iceberg lettuce. We'd hardly left the airport and I felt like my stay in Montana was doomed. And that's the end of chapter two.